welcome to my humble abode. Uh, my name is Raz. I'm Rokanar from Instagram and sometimes known by some of you as Mr. AMG. This is another Instagrammer who focuses on AMG as well. His name is Tristan. He's AMG TDSO. And we're both part of the YouTube channel known as Remove Before Race. And basically, we are AMG addicts. And this here, we are traveling all the way up to a falter back in Germany. And this trip is going to be really exciting because in convoy, we are going to be taking not one, but two special editions specifically made for the 50 years of AMG. Now we wish they were the hypercar project one, but they're not, but they're the next best thing. And we're going to show you that car right now. So that car is the AMG GTC Edition 50 Coupe, and it's going to be driven by Tristan now. Tristan, we've made some changes on this for this trip, haven't we? We have indeed. We've made a few changes. Uh, I myself am going to be the lucky uh, owner of an Edition 50 in uh, the next couple of weeks. Well, yours has arrived, in fact. It has it? arrived. It arrived yesterday. Not in time for this trip, but uh, you know, I'm very lucky to be be able to drive this one. Uh, there are only 25 of these coming to the UK. My good friend uh, Raz has one. Myself and our good friend David has another. So we've made a couple of homage editions uh, to this car. You notice the, uh, the special 50 years of AMG stripe here, which has uh, been appearing a, a lot uh, this year on AMG cars around the range. Um, there's a little homage inside with uh, a slight change in, uh, in seat belt color here, which uh, adds a little pop to the inside, we think. And we've also done a similar 50 year stripe across the wing mirrors. We didn't want to change too much, and this was all done by the UK performance studio called Rock Studio, but we wanted it just to look a little bit different for our trip. So we were also very kindly given an E63S wagon, which in my opinion is the ultimate road trip car for, that you could get in terms of an AMG form. So that is this car and it's very kindly been lent to us by Mercedes-Benz UK. And we've also, again, we've added the Edition 1 stripes on the side, a bit of livery in terms of our own usernames and whatnot. But this is all for the AMG road trip 2017. And you're probably wondering why I've got an AMG showroom in my house and the reason for that is I basically can't stop buying them which is not a bad thing so this is my daily drive which is the AMG E63S 4MATIC Plus this is the edition one as you can see from the Magno Night Black um, incredible it's in the 600 plus horsepower club uh, what else have we got we've got some more interesting things here this is uh, Tristan's semi AMG as I like to call it it's actually a Barabbas Smart the fully tuned version um, it's a cool car, it's a cool car and it's going to get cooler soon so keep an eye on his Instagram. And furthermore, what else do we have? Ah, my favourite. This is the king of the hill as far as I am concerned. This is the beast of the green hell itself, the AMG GTR. And although I call the E63 my daily, genuinely I tend to use this a lot more because as Tobias Moore said when he unveiled the car, the car has got the daily usability of a normal AMG GT, but it's got all that GT3 track performance as well. So yeah, as long as they keep making them, I'm gonna keep buying them. This one, this one's a special little car. This is for my little son. And uh, he doesn't say this is his car. So he will refer to this as daddy's car and that is his car. And it's best if I don't argue with him on that point. guys if you're ever planning your own road trip into Europe Euro Tunnel is notorious for getting your wheels damaged but what we've done is if you book with either a roof box or like a bicycle rack you get put into the larger cabin so if you look here we've got huge amounts of space between the curb and the wheel which means that there's no hassle there's no tension and if you come in enough cars you get the whole carriage to yourself as well which is fantastic
How many times did you uh, fuel the car at all? Uh, since the start of the journey, twice. So not bad at all. So averaging about 21 miles to the gallon. So according to the Mercedes Me app, I haven't really let it go below sort of half a tank, a quarter of a tank while it's running in. It, it arrived, it was built on my daughter's birthday on the 5th of September, um, which is really special. Um, so it really means a lot to us in the family and my daughter absolutely adores it. She's eight and refers to it as daddy's noisy car. About a year ago, I, I saw a few pictures um, of this special edition and they said that there was only going to be 500 um, worldwide of the coupes and 500 worldwide of the roadsters. Um, and we didn't know how many would come to the UK. Maybe around June time, I said, am I getting one? And they said, yes, of course you're getting one. I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't know. So then I started to get very excited and uh, it arrived in the UK um, two days ago. It's ready for me when I get back to the UK. Uh, but not in time, not in time for this trip. technician straight from school at 16 at my local Mercedes dealer in England and I did my training there for 10 years as a technician working on the cars um, I remember it was 1989 and the 129S Sal had just been launched um, so I my love for Mercedes has been since I was a young child growing up in Germany I think it goes all the way back to my grandfather um, he was a man who was really into his cars and his ultimate car was always the Mercedes-Benz but he could never quite afford one but even in, during his, his day and age when he, was, uh, when he was a younger man he would factory order cars and come to Germany to collect them I think it was Opel that he would buy that's all he could afford mm. but that was the closest thing to him getting that experience of coming down to Stuttgart or Germany and picking up a car so when my father um, was older and earning more, uh, this was already ingrained in him and he already had a love for Mercedes. Mm -hmm. So every year he would buy my grandfather a new C-Class and my grandfather just loved it. He would come outside, he, would, he was famous for getting one cloth and cleaning the whole car, just spending half an hour to an hour just cleaning the car. And it's just watching that passion between the two of those, the, the two of them, that it was, inevitably going to fall into me. I will confess I've not always been a Mercedes and AMG uh, lover. I didn't know much about them until maybe about 10 years ago. Um, and the first thing that struck me about AMG particularly is the emotion that they managed to get into their cars um, that I never found in any other, any other type of car. Uh, my, my father was in the British military yeah. um, and we were based in Osnabrück in northern Germany um, so I grew up there um, went to school there um, and my dad used to take me to the dealership at the weekend and I used to go and have a look at the car and take all the brochures um, it was always a running joke at school um, all my pit all my friends had pictures of girls on their walls and I had pictures of Mercedes on my walls so my wife used to work for Mercedes-Benz that's how we met um, we met through Mercedes-Benz. She worked for the dealer in Jersey and I worked for a Mercedes-Benz dealer in the UK. And we used to swap cars between each other. Um, so we have Mercedes-Benz to thank for us meeting. Um, and you know, my daughter has a, a real love for Sadies, as she calls them. Before she was born, I wanted to call her Mercedes for her middle name. And my wife said, 
it's not really. So we called her Grace, which is the Spanish translation for Mercedes. Is it? Mercedes in Spanish means Grace. So my daughter's middle name is Grace. So that's, that's, I've still got that little link to Mercedes with my daughter. I'm from London. Uh, I have uh, an American mother, a French father, um, and I work in financial services. Um, I'm a chief executive officer. Um, and I have a love of cars. The first AMG I owned was a C63 Coupe 507 edition. Oh, wow. That was my first uh, AMG, and I really love that car. I, I actually regret selling it. I should, have, I should have kept that one. In terms of Mercedes, I, I think my first car was a A140. We used to have... Um, the clutchless manual, do you remember the semi-automatics? Yeah, yeah. So my, actually my, my mom has such a car now. It's a, yeah. the, the 169 series, the yes. second A-Class, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, that, that was the first one and I went on to that from a C180 Coupe and then my first big purchase was a CLS 320 when they first came out, the new uh, CDIs. And that was a beautiful car, it was the first four-door Coupe in the world. Um, and I was always into my Mercedes diesels, but then my first uh, foray into AMG was selling the CLS and buying a SLK 55 compressor. Mm -hmm. And this was that design, which had the, um, the SLR type nose. Yeah. And I fell in love with that car. And ever since, it's been, it's been AMG all the way. My first one was an SL 55 with the 5.5 compressor. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, I had an SL63. And I had two 63s, um, a black one, an obsidian black and a silver. Yeah. And then after that, I had the CLS63 Coupe. And my wife had a C63 uh, Estate, the first one in the 204 model. So quite a, quite a few. You just get addicted to the whole thing, the, to the whole experience. It's, it's very, very emotional. Yeah. Um, so really, from the SLK onwards, uh, I just climbed up into, into various different AMGs. I then went into the first ever C63, the W204. Mm -hmm. um, had a number of those. And uh, as we all know, that they are pretty much the purest form of of AMG of that time. Yeah, yeah. naturally aspirated motor. Naturally aspirated 6.2 litre. Yeah. Um, absolutely phenomenal car. And again, it just built up that addiction. And then the SLS came out. And honestly, I was a very young man at the time. This was back in, what, 2010 now. And I just went for it. I, I ordered one. I got it in uh, AMG Le Mans Red uh, with the black and porcelain interior. So it was very much the launch spec. and what a car that was. Uh, just incredible with the gull wing doors, the 6.3 litre naturally aspirated engine. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Um, I sold that eventually and I went into another one which was Alabeam Silver. Do you remember the, the liquid metal finished yes. car? Probably my favourite spec'd car ever. It was that colour until you see it in person. I think they use it if I'm not wrong, in some of the concept cars? In every concept car, yeah. I think, yeah. Well, I wish it was available a bit more readily, but it is such a fantastic colour. It yeah. shows off the curves in a way that I don't think any other colour, uh, metallic or Magno, can. I had a C63S uh, Edition 1 Coupe, um, and I loved that car, and it, it, it was my daily car, really. Um, and I bought that after the 507. Um, but when the, when the opportunity came up for the Edition 50, um, I knew it wasn't really a car I wanted to drive every day because uh, with work and things like this it would stay in the car park for long, long parts of the day. So I wanted something fun uh, and a little bit quirky to sit alongside the Edition 50. So I bought a, a Smart 4.4 uh, Brabus, um, which, is, which is really fun actually. Um, and yeah, that, that's going to... That's going to be kind of my daily run around car and then you know on the weekends and for fun I get to play with the Edition 50. And 
I think the nice thing for me, um, you know, with my love of AMG and having owned so many, the, the opportunity to own this special car for 50 year anniversary car and a GT, um, you know, which is AMG's own product. And, you know, they developed this car from the ground up. You know, it's not a, a, a Mercedes Benz that's been re engineered and rebadged as an AMG. This is only an AMG, and that's really special for me, and that's what means so much. And, you know, one of, one of the amazing things about this trip for me is because uh, obviously I have my own Edition 50, which has now arrived, but I'm driving an almost identical car. Well, it is an identical car. Um, and I'm having this long test drive to really familiarize myself and get to know the car. I'm convoying or following another edition 50 uh, belonging to David, which gives me the perspective of being able to see my car in motion. It's a very unique perspective, this, um, for, for you know, a, a soon-to-be owner of a car to be able to see all of this. And it's, it's really exciting. Also, the car is so rare, you will never otherwise see this. Oh, exactly. Uh, you know, as I said before, only 500 for the world, only 25 in the UK. So it's not a car you're going to see very much. And here I am with, uh, with two of them. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm very excited to drive our GTC, which has just finished running in. Yeah. I think it's done a thousand miles while you guys were in the car, in fact. Yeah, yeah, uh, Tristan already floored it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> You're not smiling at all. <laughs> How's that? It's not my car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have to concentrate. Yeah. If I'm accelerating, I will build up gently um, and just keep it at a comfortable, uh, comfortable level for the car while the engine's just bedding in. And then after a thousand miles, I will tend to use the Sport, Sport Plus modes um, and do a little bit more sort of harder acceleration. 1,500 kilometers. So according to this, ah. this is now run in. We have, we have completed the running in instructions. Ah, they are there. And I didn't know that it has its instructions on the, on the window. Yeah, it has the instructions. It's. Um Strangely, the GTC also needs a differential oil change yeah. at uh, 1875 miles, which the other GTs don't. Okay. So it, it seems to be unique to the GTC. Maybe I put it into Sport Plus. Now. <laughs> yes, this is what it's about. We better not tell Raz I did that. I did about 500 miles in the UK, yeah. just its first few miles, and uh, just hearing the sound and the, um, the sound changed, it was quite quiet when we first picked it up, and then the sound began to build over time, and same with the throttle response. It's, some people don't really value the, the art of running in as much, yeah. but it does make a really big difference. Und die Sachen müssen sich einfach erstmal einlaufen, die ganzen Legierungen zusammen, dass das perfekt harmoniert und deswegen hat man eine Einlaufphase, dass das sich alles anpasst dementsprechend. Bei einem Kolben, wenn man genau ins Detail geht, ist es einfach so, die Kolben haben Ölabstreifringe und Kompressionsringe und die sind beschichtet, die Laufbahn ist beschichtet und deswegen sollte der Kolben nicht gleich mit 5000, 6000 äh, Umdrehungen da drin im, äh, in, im Kurbelgehäuse laufen, sondern das muss sich einfach alles langsam einlaufen. That was the one thing that all three of us wanted, was a Kubler engine. Yeah. And we said, uh, is there anything we can do to get a Kubler engine? And they said, you can't. Um, it's just yeah. the way they are. You know, you can't guarantee, yeah. you can't pick who does your engine for you. We built the motor bei us in the motor manufacture auf bringt die Plakette an, aber dann ist im Endeffekt ja der Weg, den Weg kann man ja nicht weiter verfolgen dementsprechend. Der Motor geht dann ins Fahrzeugwerk, wird eingebaut und dann ist es ja für einen normalen schwer nachvollziehbar, in welches Auto geht er, wo kommt der Motor hin, weil wir sehen das ja persönlich nicht. Die schönsten Momente sind einfach speziell als Motorenbauer, wenn ein Kunde einen anschreibt, der macht ein Bild von dem Motor und man sieht dann seine eigene Plakette drauf. Das ist einfach ein an Ansporn immer weiter also weiter alles zu geben macht einen stolz Mike is an absolute legend as we all know 
but he's a really just a warm, lovely person as well. He's one of the only guys that makes the uh, the engines for the uh, Pagani supercars or hypercars as they really are. Bei mir hat's halt einen riesen Selbstläufer genommen. Angefangen bei null wie jeder andere, wenn er einen Account macht und ich bin mittlerweile bei 195.000. Ich habe über 3000 Kunden, wo mir folgen auf Instagram. Es gibt Leute, die sind in, ich sag mal, die ältere Generation, so wie mein Vater oder so, die sind Mitte 60, die haben sich wirklich einen Account über ihren Sohn machen lassen, einfach nur um mir zu schreiben, um sich den bedanken, zu bedanken, dass ich den Motor baut habe. Und das ist halt schon eine richtig coole Sache. Ja. As a joke, we all took a photo of the engine plaque for Mike Kubler and we put them on our engines and we said, Kubler! I don't know if Giuseppe de Giuseppe will be very happy, but. <lacht> Um, Mike tells me he's a very good engineer, so I'm all right. Hopefully I'll get to meet him on um, Tuesday. Yeah. Um, because I met my, I've met all my engine builders. Um, my C63 was Dominic um, Stark, and I met him last year. Um, so I've become friends with him now, which is really great. Um, because I think it's nice for the engine builders. They, they don't see what car their engine goes into. So I think it's nice for them to see where their engine has ended up. Um, and I think, again, that's where social media is fantastic. Some of the people on Instagram, you know, I, I've never met them, but we've been talking, you know, for years. And so they are friends um, and, you know, we get to meet them and spend time and talk about life and cars, um, that, that's the most important thing. On all these trips, as soon as we cross the border into Germany, my heart is like, yes, um, I'm back home almost. Um, it feels, it does feel like home. amazing and you guys might be used to is how unfazed the car is yeah. it's almost like I'm still driving at you know 130 kilometers yeah. an hour and it helps that your roads are so good as well yeah well it's also at the end of the day it's also a matter of common sense for the, is. Uh, for the drivers, of course, it's it's uh, it's based on the trust in Germany. Yet on the trust yep. that uh, people know what they are doing. Um, I, I've seen a big change in driving style. Whenever I come to Europe, going through France into Germany, yeah. everybody knows how to use the motorways correctly. Um, everybody sticks in the right lane when it's time to overtake. That's the only time that they'll come into the faster lane, yeah. which is how it should be. And it's not necessarily the case in all of the world. Um, we struggle with that quite a lot in the UK where people are just in the wrong lanes. Um, but there is a, generally speaking, quite a good discipline that I've seen in Europe. Yeah. So that trust element, it makes sense. Yeah. The rate of accidents speaks for itself. Yeah. Uh, our rates in the UK are much higher. Um, and yet we drive at a maximum of 70 miles per hour. And even that is in the major motorways, to be honest. Yeah. So it's. I don't think one is directly correlating with the other one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is crazy. The car just doesn't care, it's so easy yeah. for it. Incredible. It's like you said though, you have to be awake and you are awake and yeah. you are aware. That's why there's less chance of making mistakes. It's like coming home. I've only been here twice, but every time I come back to the Falterbach, it's like being right back at home. It's like I know the air, I know the surroundings, and it's, you feel like just... You know, kissing the ground, it's amazing. I love it. I love coming here. And it's time. Oh, yeah. wow. 
ich glaube, das gibt es bei keiner anderen Marke, wo so eine Markenverbundenheit hat. Nicht nur deutschlandweit, das geht dann weit über die Grenzen hinaus. Und das Ganze ist ja auch von uns hier privat organisiert. Wir werden, denke ich mal, einen super Tag erleben. Das Event selber gibt es jetzt im fünften Jahr, gestartet wirklich mit drei Personen. Das war die Beatrice aus Hamburg und der Ahmed aus Ägypten. Mein Name ist Beatrice. Ich bin auf Instagram mit TT4561, was, wie man sieht, das Kennzeichen wurde irgendwann. Angefangen hat das hier, weil ich mein Auto bestellt hatte, dieses Auto, und dann überlegt hatte, im Juli bestellt. Und dann habe ich mitgekriegt, dass AMG diese Touren anbietet. Und in dem Fall diese Emotion Tour, wo ich gedacht habe, okay, da kannst du ein paar mehr Autos fahren oder ein paar andere Autos, das buche ich jetzt mal. Bin auch ganz alleine noch mit der alten A-Klasse hergekommen, habe ganz verschämt da hinten die Straße runtergeparkt, weil ich gedacht habe, oh Gott, kein AMG, kann ich hier nicht auf den Hof fahren. A couple of months later, she posted pictures of so many AMGs like the ones that we have around us. Uh, so I asked her, well, what is this? Where does this happen? And she said, there's an event that happens every uh, year. They announce uh, uh, the dates, it happens like four times a year. Uh, and if you'd be interested, I'll let you know. And that's when it happened. And I came the first time. She came to pick me up from the airport. And uh, she told me Michael Kubler is coming. And I've, I figured out who Michael Kubler was because a couple of friends of mine had G-Wagons with engines made by Kubler. Uh, right now we have an uh, AMG GT3 race engine here. Uh, the engine is based on the SLS, but it's modified for the new AMG GT3 race car. So we have a higher compression, different pistons, a different crankshaft, different cylinder heads, con rods. So it's highly modified for the new race car. The output could be around about over 700 horsepower for natural aspirated. What is really much, but uh, in case of the GT3 rules, we are air restricted. There's a... Uh, there's a balance of performance and the balance of performance uh, is taking the cars on the same level. We have different brands with different types of cars, different types of engines. For us it's not, not really a bad thing because we can run a, a higher revision time. It's cleaning, changing parts and rebuild it. Hours after 20,500 race kilometers, which is really much, when we talk about the others, around about 5,000 race kilometers. They have to make a re revision. The build time for a GT3 engine is around about three days. One and a half days only make measurements. I have to collect all the data, the compression and stuff like this and have to show it on every engine for the regulation. We want to come closer. Here you see the pistons, this is a chain. So the engine is running and turning. When you have the pistons on the crankshaft and the pistons go up and down. Pistons are this.
guys, we're here in front of a film icon. So this is the Autobot Drift from the movie Transformers The Last Night. And if you're wondering what he looked like on film when transformed, that's him. Really cool little toy. So this is actually a pre-production AMG GTR. So before the customer cars and the press cars were developed, this car was given to the filmmakers and they were allowed to do the livery and turn it into the Autobot Drift. There are some things that are different on it compared to the production car. Nothing too significant. Stuff like the Mercedes badge being the old style one as opposed to the black badges. But yeah, it's really cool and it's it's great to see this black and red theme alongside our Drogon who's also got a black and red theme going on in terms of the AMG 50 years. So the two are really matching up quite well. And on this side we have when the AMG GT facelift was announced, these two cars specifically were shown uh, to, for the press and for the public. So this is the actual solar beam AMG GTS shown in the press shots alongside JSY AMG's edition 50. So. This has been a pretty cool honor for us to sit here on the hill next to the Mercedes-Benz Museum and to show you a film icon alongside our very special edition 50s. I'll tell you what, there's nothing more amazing than bringing something like the Edition 50, a car that is to celebrate 50 years of AMG, and to bring it back to the places that are most synonymous with AMG, our Faltebach earlier today, now the Mercedes-Benz Museum, which is an absolute monument to Mercedes. There can't be anything better. What do you think, Dave? I absolutely. Couldn't agree more. I think to, to finish the day off here at the museum, at the steps of the original factory in Unterturkheim, where it all started um, is an absolute honor, absolute honor, and uh, I couldn't have had a better day. Fantastic, good German food. It's wow. amazing, huh? Enjoy your meal, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Please. Please.